Okay, the next key idea is charge polarization. And the basic part of this is that we're separating negative and positive charges. Where students often make mistakes with this is actually in thinking that polarization can only happen in certain conditions. So first we'll look at polarization in a conductor. So imagine that we have a conductor attached to the ceiling, uh, some metal ball. You can reproduce this, and I used to do a lab where we would basically take a piece of aluminum foil and crumple it up so we have a neutral metal ball. So neutral doesn't mean that there is no charge, it means there's no net charge. So there are protons and there are electrons in there, and that seems brutally obvious when I say it like that. Basically, it means there's the same number of protons and electrons. If I take a balloon that I just rubbed against my friend's head, that's how we do it in the lab. Now that I have children, I can rub my children's head with balloons and they love it. So if we take a negatively charged balloon, which would imply that it got the electrons, the extra electrons from somewhere, and there's a, there are some electrons missing from my kid's hair right now. When I bring that balloon close to the neutral metal ball, the negative charged balloon will repel any electrons that are free to move inside the metal ball. Some electrons will actually move to the right-hand side. It actually pushes some of the electrons away by causing this repulsive force. When the electrons within the neutral metal ball get pushed to the right, that means there's going to be a region on the left that's lacking electrons. When the negative charges, when the electrons are repelled away from the balloon, that leaves a space of some missing electrons on the left side of the ball. If we add all of these up, I would get something I'll call FL. And if we add all, all the forces on the right, I'll have something I'll call FR. It turns out that the magnitude of the force depends on how far the charge is away from each other. So this balloon coming in here from the left with a negative charge repels electrons within the metal ball and that pushes them to the right. As the electrons get pushed to the right, that force weakens because the electrons get further away from the balloon. And what it means then is it leaves these sort of unguarded. You could maybe imagine something like a man-to-man -man defense in basketball where you have these protons that are then missing their local electrons. And there's a net force to the left on each of those protons. What's really interesting then is that the force on the left turns out to be bigger than the force on the right. So without even touching this conductor, we've polarized it by separating the charge. So we have negative on the right, positive on the left, but then even more than polarizing it, because it's been polarized, the, there's actually a net force on the metal ball towards the balloon. The other case to look at is in an insulator. So if I have an insulator, I'll hang it also from the ceiling. Inside the insulator, the electrons are not free to move from one place to another. Um, so instead, I look at individual atoms, and I'm just going to draw three of them here. If I again, imagine I'm, I'm separating this, if I again bring a balloon in from the left, and it's a negatively charged balloon, then what happens is the balloon will actually polarize the individual atoms. So the electrons are not free to move around within the insulator, but the orbit of the electron can change. And by bringing the balloon closer, you actually influence the orbit so that there's a higher probability that the electrons will be farther away from the balloon. And you end up with a similar effect. Now, it's not as extreme. With a, on the conductor, you might have a five centimeter diameter conductor and you can easily visualize that there's a five centimeter difference between FR and FL. Within the atoms of the insulator, there's not, we don't have any five centimeter atoms. It's on a tiny, tiny, tiny scale. But this effect applies for every single atom in the insulator. And what happens then is you, you get billions of these tiny polarized atoms and when you, each one of those experiences a similar force where the right force is smaller than the left force, and you end up with a net force, again, pointing towards the left, even though it's an insulator. So the atoms are locked in place, but they end up getting individually polarized. And when you add up all of the atoms together, you get a substantial net force.